Class is in session. The professor is in. What's happening, y'all? We have Bradshaw, the Acolyte, six-star bronze preview. I don't get to keep the character. This character will be given back and taken back by Scopely once the preview has been completed. So now that we've said all that, let's bro and take a look at him. He is a striker, an aggressive one. His coaching ability is an interesting one. I'm interested to see where this will go. Uh, row break gems do 75% more damage at 26k. And black moves charge by two more move points. So interested to see where that goes. Uh, so far, just the attitude era link and the single kind of gear. Uh, in terms of the strap, we're going to use a bunch of different plates and other things. But for the most part, unless specified elsewhere, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, we're going to use takedown two metals. Uh, so that's going to give us an extra eighty percent move damage uh, on top, and this is one hundred and fifty percent black right there. Uh, and then we'll get into the different plates when we use them. All right, so let's go check out some moves. So for our move, first move set, we're actually going to bring in the clothesline from hell. And this is one big and beefy finisher. It is a 10 MP and you are going to deal 1.78 million damage and you're going to decrease the juggernaut gems by two and pin the opponent. And now this is what's important. These turns, if it, it triggers it, their final effects will be triggered and these gems will go in order from left to right top to bottom on the board so basically at the very top left corner it's going to destroy the juggernaut gems going this way and then this way and then this way and it'll keep going down the board i'll show you what it means when we get to that point because we have two sets of juggernaut gems to put down so we're going to do the swinging uh running running swinging net breaker words in order matter we're going to choose two juggernaut gems Increase our black MP by five on every countdown, and we're going to make 20 random gems into a mobile gems at the end of the countdown. This one has to go first and highest and to the left, so keep that in mind. The next one is the big boot, and this is another two turn juggernaut, and this is going to increase all of your gems by 90% damage. And then it's going to turn 24 immobile gems when it's all done into yellow gems, okay? That should be an O, yellow gems, okay? This will make more sense in just a second when we get through to the gameplay. Now, definitely a few ways that you can run this. Uh, we want, obviously, more yellow gem damage. We want to get our black finishing move as much damage as possible. That's why you saw that the plates were the way that they were uh, in the in the preview the metals and such get your black finishers as much as you can this can be up to 50 percent if you have her at 26k we'll take the extra black move damage here but you can also put in someone like goldberg and make an extra juggernaut gem and that's really what's going to be the difference between how hard you can hit this uh going forward uh in terms of the different plates that we can put on there uh, this one would work, especially if you ha get stuck into a second turn. We're going to break 20 gems easily. So now our black move is going to go 300% more on top of that. I won't be able to show that. No one's going to survive for us. Uh, and whenever we make immobile gems, our black move damage is going to go by 250% for two more turns. So you can see that if this ever made it to another turn, this could be deadly. And if you hear that purring, that is my cat sitting on my shoulder as I try to preview Bradshaw. So we're going to take this out on the road. We're going to go against Walter. Now I do want to mention if you were able to get the Ghostbuster plate, wherever you make Juggernaut gems, you reduce your opponent's MP would work amazing on this build. So that's something that uh, to keep in mind, uh, something that you might actually want uh, for yourself if you have the ability to, to get that. We need to make sure that this swinging neck breaker is our first move and that this is our second move, and we do have to put it in a very particular order. Since we are going with the finishers goes, as I mentioned before, the finisher goes left to right like this, and then it will proc the next one down and then the next one down. So it's going to continue to go in order like that. So we're going to want to make sure our juggernaut gems are to the very left for the one that we want first, and then after that, we can put them down another row uh, in the third row is where I would recommend, like so. If you have yourself 
a yellow match, even better. It fills up our moves, and then we can try to get all of them to go off. All right, so the first set goes off, the next set goes off. We got our black MP, and now we can put out a second set right here. So now all four of these are going to put out um, more... Um, more reinforced gems, these are going to make more of them into yellow. Put them underneath the ones that you had before. All right, so the first kind goes in the same two columns. The next kind goes into the next column, and these are going to set them all off. And our finisher just did 11 million. That's how much we were able to max it out. All of that turns to yellow. We do a big boom. That boom does 4 million on its own. And the finisher did 11 million. So there's a 16 million uh, on our second turn uh, hit just from maxing out uh, metals in move damage. So you can play this differently. You can put in gem damage and take less of the move damage. You can play around how you want to, but that's how you would play that in order to get the most and maximum damage. All right, next move set. So for our next move set, we're going to keep the Hogan plate in. We can also change that around as well too. But for now, I'll show you how to use it if you wanted to in order to get um, more black move damage. And that might come in handy. You can also put like a Rhonda's jacket on there. So you can, if need be. Uh, let's find our Rhonda's jacket. That would make a difference. There it is. Something like that. Um, so whenever you generate three or more submission gems, increase your yellow and black gem damage by 100% for two turns. Uh, any sub damage uh, would obviously help. I think it, it also does red, so you might actually want a gremlin's ears for that. It's the seal of the alkalites plate. So if you got this one last week, anytime you make six or more submission gems, all of your gem damage goes up by 50% for your next turn. So that's going to be helpful when we start making subs. Uh, we're going to keep the move damage on, but you can also switch this out. We're going to get into more of the damage that is gem based so our sleeper hold is actually really cool we're going to choose 10 they're going to become red submission gems for three turns 180k damage but they are going to become power gems of 536k per left on the board so it's going to be very important to try to keep some of those on the board itself uh, depending on which how you're going to run this this elbow drop does 1.34 million, so we're going to try to buff that with the move damage, and then it's going to increase it by another 536k damage. Last but not least, you're going to use the, the JBL bomb, choose a 4x5 area to swap into black gems. And so when we look at the entourage for something like this, you do have a lot of options to go with. So in order to make sure this goes off turn one for a feud, you're going to want to put in Woods for Black MP, and you can put in Santa Hogan on the back end to help with that. Um, in order to get even more power gem damage, though, uh, what you're going to look to is this Undertaker right here. I wish I had him a little bit higher, but he can do, I believe, it's up to 150% for your power gems. Um, and then you can put in uh, someone like Alexa Bliss, or if you have uh, the bro Matt Riddle, I would go Bliss over Riddle just based on percentage at 500k is going to be better than the flat ad uh, that he will bring uh, to the table if you want to get uh, if mp is a problem uh, you can also put i believe eo sky does um, black mp plus two so there's different ways that you can sort of run this if you want more black gem damage you can put in flat trainers as well too but what we're going to try to do is to buff these numbers right here this 536k so we can do a ton more damage uh, going forward. All right, let's check out how these work and let's see how much damage we can do um, on the road. Let's bro. Let's do this, Walter. So this allows us then on turn one to put down 10 red submission gems. We're really only going to need, um, come few time, uh, we're going to need two matches. Um, but we can also do, we can do this sort of two ways. So if you did put the Hogan plate on, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make some row breaks. Uh, so that's going to be 21 gems right there. And then the rest of these uh, we're going to put on the board in different places to hopefully keep them on the board. I'll put that one there. And so by breaking all those gems with the sub, we are going to get our um, Hogan plate to go off. 
and now our gems are going to do even more damage right so we got some 50 percent there so now this move because we have so much black move damage so this is where the hogan plate comes into play now this is doing eight million just on this one black move uh right here and so we are going to increase our power gem attack so now these power gems are going to be doing uh two million each and then we can swap the four by five area into red and do some extra damage mm -hmm. as much as we can or should we turn them into black and so that did 4 million on top of the 8 million that we had put down uh, originally. So you can see how that could be very effective with the Hogan plate. So that's how you would run it with the Hogan plate to get the extra black move damage on top of whatever else you can leave on the board. All right, let's try something else. So this time we'll try it out with the Rhonda's jacket. So whenever we make a sub, we're going to do 100% more black gem damage for two turns. Uh, and we can go um, with a, a super build. All right, one second. All right, so just switch it out. We're going to put in some Fury 2 medals uh, to go along with the 30 that's on the plate. So that's 110% more damage. There's another 26. So we're doing uh, roughly 136% more damage plus the extras from these plates. So gem damage build all the way. So we're just going to run this the exact same way. We're just going straight gem damage. But this time we're going to try to keep as many of these power gems on the board. So we can do maximum damage uh, that way. So let's go check it out again. So Walter, let's bro. So same idea. We're going to need uh, one or two matches, depending on what your MP is like. Uh, and then the rest of these we throw uh, actually on the board and hope that nothing comes between us. And hopefully we can put these on the side somewhere. So the other thing that you can do with this is that you can make some uh, sub down. So if you wanted to use like Ric Flair, uh, the corporate version, uh, you can use that to bring down his ability. So each one of these gems now is doing, um, the power gem is doing just about a million and that's with me not having all the trainers at the best places they could be. We're going to buff them again. So they're going to do about 2 million uh, each. So now we're doing just about 2 million for each one that you get on the board. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. So we're going to do an extra 12 million damage with this alone. So the, the better or the more that you can keep them on the outside, right? So you can keep all of them on the outside portions of the board. In this area the better it is for you for when you try to put this on the board trying not to break all of your power gems and so we just did a whole host and chunk of damage and somehow did not end him right then and there so we'll just end him now there we go so you can just see how powerful that becomes as well too so you have several options depending on the plates that you have or no plates at all. If you don't have any plates at all, then you just go power gem heavy. Uh, and if you saw the stream that Davey D and I did, big shout out to Davey D Gaming. Um, he was doing well over 2 million per gem. Uh, it was almost 2.5 million with leveled up power gem coaches. All right, one last build. So our last move set is we're going to do the triple red. Um, probably my least favorite. It's effective, but the other ones just do so much better. Uh, we're going to do 1.34 million with the scoop power slam. We're going to choose six gems to make into X break gems. Fall away slam. We're going to choose nine gems to make into multiples of seven. And lastly, the JBL bomb, which we're going to again choose a four by five into black gems uh, at the end of it. Um, plate wise, we're going to change this around just a little bit. Give me one second. Uh, we're going to put on the... Uh, Bianca's braid plate. Uh, this one, whenever you make six or more X break gems, increase all your gem damage by 100% for two turns. Uh, I don't have a good ultimate plate uh, to put on there, but a veer plate and destroying with the veer plate would then reduce your opponent's MP. So this is a move set that you will never get hit if you put on the veer plate. Uh, and in terms of uses here, you got a lot of choices. You can go with more uh, gem sorry multiply gem numbers so rather than have like so what i'm doing which is create more multiples you can also put mat on here for times two 
more. You can put Memrock on for times one more. Um, you can also, as I've done, create more X break gems. Just depends on how you want to run him or just go for gem damage. But we're I'm going for just making a lot more multiply gems on the board that we can blow up. So all of this will be turn one come feud with Santa Hogan on the back end. Um, or you can put on uh, an MP trainer at the front end as well too to have them go up. So it's entirely up to you or how you want to move uh, your lineup with this. So we got seven X break gems to put down. You're going to want to put them in two columns basically to blow up the board. So one, two, three, and then you stagger them in the next column like so. So we've put three over here and then we put the next three down here. So down one and across. And so this is going to break, let's, Let's get this to work properly. So this is going to break this line here and this line here. This one's going to break this line all the way up here, but also this line all the way here and so forth, right? So you're going to see that this is going to break the majority of the board if you stagger them like so, as you can see. So this is basically what we're going to try to destroy the most of within um, by staggering it in such a way. Uh, let's go put them there and then our job then is to put all of these at least one um, onto a red that's that way it reloads the red um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to blow up these ones down here I'll explain this more in a second but basically all of these within the blast zone of the X break gems because your final red move if you're using a veer plate, you would have to destroy, you only need to destroy one set, or you can destroy both of them like theirs. But it's entirely up to you how you want to destroy, or how much you want to destroy. But you need to destroy at least one set, blow up most of the board, and that did 7 million uh, on its own turn one. You're completely reloaded, and if you have a veer plate, all the better. They're not getting a turn, you're going to smack them one more time. So that's JBL. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give it the old like, share, and subscribe as you do. Thanks for coming to class. Professor out. Mm -hmm.